Now, one. Hi. My name is Now, and I'm a time being. Do you know what a time being is? Well, if you give me a moment, I will tell you. A time being is someone who lives in time, and that means you and me and every one of us who is or was or ever will be. As for me, right now, I'm sitting in a French maid cafe in Akiba Electricity Town, listening to a sad chanson that's playing sometime in your past, which is also my present, writing this and wondering about you, somewhere in my future. And if you're reading this, then maybe by now you're wondering about me too. You wonder about me. I wonder about you. Who are you and what are you doing? Are you in a New York subway car hanging from a strap or soaking in your hot tub in Sunnyvale? Are you sunbathing on a sandy beach in Phuket or having your toenails buffed in Brighton? Are you a male or a female or somewhere in between? Is your girlfriend cooking you a yummy dinner or are you eating cold Chinese noodles from a box? Are you curled up with your back turned coldly towards your snoring wife or are you eagerly waiting for your beautiful lover to finish his bath so you can make passionate love to him. Do you have a cat? And is she sitting on your lap? Does her forehead smell like cedar trees and fresh, sweet air? Actually, it doesn't matter very much because by the time you read this, everything will be different and you will be nowhere in particular, flipping idly through the pages of this book, which happens to be the diary of my last days on earth, wondering if you should keep on reading. And if you decide not to read anymore, hey, no problem, because you're not the one I was waiting for anyway. But if you do decide to read on, then guess what? You're my kind of time being, and together we'll make magic. Two. Uh, that was dumb. I'll have to do better. I bet you're wondering what kind of stupid girl would write words like that. Well, I would. Now would. Now is me, Naoko Yasutani, which is my full name, but you can call me now because everyone else does. And I better tell you a little bit more about myself if we're going to keep on meeting like this. Actually, not much has changed. I'm still sitting in this French maid cafe in Akiba Electricity Town, and Edith Pilaf is singing another sad chanson, and Babette just brought me a coffee and I've taken a sip. Babette is my maid and also my new friend and my coffee is Blue Mountain, and I drink it black, which is unusual for a teenage girl, but it's definitely the way good coffee should be drunk if you have any respect for the bitter bean. I've pulled up my sock and scratched behind my knee. I've straightened my pleats so that they line up neatly on the tops of my thighs. I've tucked my shoulder-length hair behind my right ear, which is pierced with five holes, but now I'm letting it fall modestly across my face again because the otaku sarariman, who's sitting at the table next to me, is staring, and it's creeping me out, even though I find it amusing, too. I'm wearing my junior high school uniform, and I can tell by the way he's looking at my body that he's got a major schoolgirl fetish. And if that's the case, then how come he's hanging out at a French maid cafe? I mean, what a dope. But you can never tell. Everything changes, and anything is possible. So maybe I'll change my mind about him, too. Maybe in the next few minutes, he will lean awkwardly in my direction and say something surprisingly beautiful to me, and I will be overcome with a fondness for him in spite of his greasy hair and bad complexion. And I'll actually condescend to converse with him a little bit, and eventually he will invite me to go shopping, and if he can convince me that he's madly in love with me, I'll go to a department store with him and let him buy me a cute cardigan sweater or a keitai or a handbag, even though he obviously doesn't have a lot of money. And then after, maybe we'll go to a club and drink some cocktails and zip into a love hotel with a big jacuzzi. And after we bath, bathe, just as I begin to feel comfortable with him, suddenly his true inner nature will emerge. And he'll tie me up and put the plastic shopping bag from my new cardigan over my head and rape me. And hours later, the police will find my lifeless naked body bent at odd angles on the floor next to the big, round, zebra skin bed. Or... Maybe he'll just ask me to strangle him a little with my panties while he gets off on their beautiful aroma. Or maybe none of these things will happen except in my mind and yours because, like I told you, together we're making magic.
at least for the time being. Three. Are you still there? I just reread what I wrote about the salary man, and I want to apologize. That was nasty. That was not a nice way to start. I don't want to give you the wrong impression. I'm not a stupid girl. I know Edith Pilaf's name isn't really Pilaf. And I'm not a nasty girl or a hentai either. I'm actually not a big fan of hentai, so if you are one, then please just put down this book immediately and don't read any further, okay? You'll only be disappointed and wasting your time because this book is not going to be some kinky girl's secret diary filled with pink fantasies and nasty fetishes. It's not what you think, since my purpose for writing it before I die is to tell someone the fascinating life story of my 104-year-old great-grandmother, who is a Zen Buddhist nun. You probably don't think nuns are all that fascinating, but my great-grandmother is, and not in a kinky way at all. I'm sure there are lots of kinky nuns out there. Well, maybe not so many kinky nuns, but kinky priests for sure. Kinky priests are everywhere. But my diary will not concern itself with them or their freaky behaviors. This diary will tell the real-life story of my great-grandmother, Yasutani Jiko. She was a nun and a novelist and a new woman of the Taisho era. She was also an anarchist and a feminist who had plenty of lovers, both males and females, but she was never kinky or nasty. And even though I may end up mentioning some of her love affairs, everything I write will be historically true and empowering to women, and not a lot of foolish geisha crap. So if kinky, nasty things are your pleasure, please close this book and give it to your wife or co-worker, and save yourself a lot of time and trouble. <laughs>